Hello friends, welcome to my book review. The title for today is Gram Swaraj or you could say Village Swaraj by none other than Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, uh, respectfully known as Mahatma Gandhi, father of our nation. This book was compiled by H.M. Vyas. He has taken the writings of Gandhi from various sources, but primarily from the Harijan and Young India magazines and has converted it into a useful handbook for all Indians. Printed and published by Navjeevan Publishing first in the year 1962, the book encapsulates the thoughts and ethos of Gandhi in the form of excerpts. Gandhi, indeed Gandhiji, was an amazing thinker and a genius who had the blueprint of India ready even before uh, she was born. Uh, the book diagrams the functioning of the smallest community community unit of human habitat that is the village and then sums it up for the nation. The book simplifies an average Indian's uh, life. It gives uh, that mark darshan specifically to each Indian and perhaps even to all the citizens of the world. The publication contains Gandhi's uh, views on different aspects of uh, rural life including agriculture, village industry, animal husbandry, transport, basic education, health and hygiene and all these topics were really dear to him. For Gandhi, Swaraj was a sacred word of a Vedic word meaning self-rule and self-restraint and not freedom from all restraint which uh, independence often, often means as every country is fit to eat, drink and uh, breathe and so is every nation fit to manage its uh, own affairs no matter how badly. By Swaraj, Gandhi meant the government of India by the consent of the people as ascertained by largest number of adult population, male or female, native born or domiciled who have contributed by manual labor to the service of the state and who have taken the trouble of uh, having registered their names as uh, voters. Real Swaraj will come not by uh, the acquisition of authority by a few people but by the acquisition of the capacity by all to resist authority when it is abused. So very true. In other words, Swaraj is to be obtained by educating the masses to a sense of their capacity to regulate and control authority. The book has uh, 29 chapters and within that you have sub chapters. Let me briefly uh, take you through the headings of the main chapters in brief as that itself will give you a comprehensive flavor of the book. So here we go. 1. Meaning of Swaraj. Swaraj can be maintained only when there is a majority of loyal patriotic people to whom the good of the nation is paramount and above all other considerations including uh, personal profit. Swaraj means government by many but where the many are immoral or selfish their government will only spell anarchy and nothing else. Two, a picture of an ideal society. There will be neither paupers nor beggars nor high nor low neither millionaire employers nor half-starved employees nor intoxicating drunk drinks or drugs there will be the same respect for women as vouchsafed to men and the chastity and the purity of men and women will be jealously guarded uh, where every woman except one's wife will be treated by men of all religions as mother, sister or daughter according to her age where there will be no untouchability and where there will be equal respect for all faiths. They will be all proudly, joyously and voluntarily read bred uh, laborers. 3. Which way lies hope? Industrialism on a mass scale will necessarily lead to passive or active exploitation of the villagers as the problems of uh, competition and marketing come in. Therefore, we have to concentrate on the village being self-contained, manufacturing mainly for use, provided 
this character of the industry is maintained, there would be no objection to villagers using even the modern machines and tools that they can make and can afford to use only they should not be used as a means of exploitation of others. Four, cities and villages. There are two schools of thought in the world. One wants to divide the world into cities and the other into villages. The village civilization and the city civilization are totally different things. One depends on the machinery and industri industrialization and the other on agriculture and uh, handicrafts. We have given preference to the latter, to the latter, I'm sorry. Five, village Swaraj to serve our village is to establish Swaraj. Everything else is but an idle uh, dream. If the village perishes, India too will perish. Great thoughts he had, I must say. It will be no more India. Her own mission in the world will get lost. Six, basic principles of uh, village Swaraj. According to me, the economic constitution of India and for that matter of the world should be such that no one under it should suffer from want of food and clothing. In other words, everybody should be able to get sufficient work to enable him to make the two ends meet. And this ideal uh, can be universally realized only if the means of uh, production of the elementary necessaries of life remain in the control of the masses. These should be freely available to all as God's air and water ought to be. They should not be made a vehicle of traffic for the exploitation of others. Their monopolization by any country, nation or group of persons would be unjust. The neglect of this simple principle is the cause of the, of, uh, the destitution uh, that we witness today not only in this unhappy land but in other parts of the world too. 7. Bread labor. The great nature has intended, intended us to earn our bread in the sweat of our bro. Everyone therefore who idles away a single minute becomes to that extent a burden upon his neighbors and to do so is to commit a breach of the very first lesson of Ahimsa. The divine law that a man must earn his bread by laboring with his own hands, his own hands, was first stressed by a Russian writer. His name was uh, T.M. Bondarev. Uh, for, uh, later, Tolstoy advertised it and gave it wide publicity. In my view, the same principle has been set forth in the third chapter of Gita, where we were told that he who eats he who eats without offering sacrifice eats stolen food. I'll repeat this. Gita says, He who eats without offering sacrifice eats stolen food. Sacrifice here can only mean bread labor. 8. Equality. My idea of a society is that while we all are born equal, which means we have a right to equal opportunity, all do not have the same capacity. It is in nature of things impossible. For instance, all cannot have the same height or color or degree of intelligence, etc. Therefore, in the nature of things, some will have the ability to earn more and others less. People with talents will have more and they will utilize their talents for this, pur for this purpose. If they utilize their talents effectively, they will be performing the work of the state. Such people would exist as uh, trustees on no other terms. I would allow a man of intellect to earn more. I would not cramp his uh, talent, but the bulk of his greater earnings must be used for the good of the state just as the incomes of all earning sons of the father go to the common family fund. 9. Theory of trusteeship. Suppose I have earned an, a fair amount of wealth either by, by way of legacy 
or by means of trade and industry i must know that all that wealth does not belong to me what belongs to me is the right to have an honorable livelihood no better than that enjoyed by millions uh, of others the rest of my wealth belongs to the community and must be used for the welfare of the community Ten, Swadeshi. There is a verse in uh, Bhagavad Gita in which uh, which says, "Masses follow the classes. Masses follow the classes. Even uh, concept of Swadeshi, like uh, any other uh, good thing, can collapse, can collapse and die if it is made out to be a fetish. That is uh, the danger that must be guarded against. Uh, to reject foreign manufacturers merely because." Uh, they are foreign and to go on wasting national time and money in the promotion in one's own country of manufacturers for which it is not suited would be a criminal folly and a negation of the swadeshi spirit remember swadeshi is not a cult of hatred on the contrary a doctrine of selfless service that has its roots in the purest ahimsa that is love 11 self sufficient self sufficiency and cooperation truth and non violence form the foundation of uh, the order of my conception our first duty is that we should not be a burden on society that is we should be self dependent from this point of view self sufficiency itself is a kind of service 12 Panchayat Raj Gandhi writes about panchayats in uh, pre-independence days panchayat has an ancient flavor it is a good word not a bad word it really means an assembly of five elected uh, <coughs> by villages five people elected by villagers it represents the system by which the innumerable village republics of india were governed but the british government by its ruthlessly uh, Thoro method of uh, revenue collection almost destroyed this uh, ancient, uh, 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 destroyed these uh, ancient uh, republics. So it was the British government that had destroyed the the republics of uh, panchayats, which could not stand the shock of this uh, revenue collection. Congressmen are now making a crude attempt uh, to revive the system by giving village elders civil and criminal. Uh, jurisdiction 13 nayi taaleem new education was popularly and correctly described as education through handicrafts this was part of the truth the root of this new education went much deeper it lay in the application of truth and love in every variety of human activity whether in individual life or a corporate one Chapter 14 to 18 are on agriculture and cattle welfare and deals with various uh, agriculture related issues of those times our uh, villages who are mostly kisans depend on agriculture and cattle for plowing i am rather ignorant in this respect for i have no personal experience but there is not a single village where we have no agriculture or cattle our workers will have to keep a careful eye on the cattle wealth of their village if we cannot use this wealth properly india will be doomed to disaster and with that we shall also perish for these animals will then as in the west become an economic burden on us and we shall have no option before us except for killing them now we need to analyze what is happening in india today the book deals with the problem of ownership of land the kisan is the sort of the earth which rightly belongs or should belong to him and not to the absentee landlord or the zamindar the other important question for consideration was whether 
cow farming should be in the hands of individuals or done collectively i myself had no hesitation in saying that she should never be saved by individual farming her salvation and with her that of the buffalo could only be brought about by collective endeavor it is quite impossible for an individual farmer to look after the welfare of his cattle in his own home in a proper and scientific manner amongst other causes lack of collective effort has been the principal cause of deterioration of cow and hence of cattle in general the world today is moving towards the ideal of a collective or cooperative effort in every department of life one potent way of increasing crop production is proper manuring artificial manures manures i am told are harmful to soil the compost manure emit no bad odor it would save lakhs of rupees and also increase the fertility of the soil without exhausting it food shortage in india is not unfamiliar with starvation and death of tens of thousands if not millions due to famine natural or man made i claim that in a well ordered society there should always be pre arranged methods of uh, successful treatment of scarcity of water and uh, food crops incidentally water is becoming a big big issue all across the world now 19 khadi and spinning every family with a plot of land can grow cotton at least for family use cotton growing is an easy process in bihar farmers by law were compelled to grow indigo a tropical plant of the pea family which was formerly cultivated as a source of a dark blue dye in one of their cultivable land <coughs> i'm sorry this was in the interest of the foreign indigo planter so why cannot we grow cotton voluntarily for the nation on a certain portion of our land decentralization commences from the beginning of the khadi processes today cotton crop is centralized and has to be sent to distant parts of india before the war before the war it used to be sent principally to britain and japan it was and still is a cash crop and therefore subject to fluctuations of the market under the khadi scheme cotton growing becomes free from this uh, uncertainty and gamble the grower grows what he needs the farmer needs to know that uh, his first business is to grow is for his own needs when he does that he will reduce the chance of low make, low market uh, ruining him a combination of home grown cotton and charkha is what uh, is being spoken about 20 other village industries i recall uh, a conversation i had with uh, fazal bhai in 1920 when i was on the eve of launching the movement of swadeshi he characterized he characteristically said to me if you congressmen become advertising agents of ours you will do no good to the country except to put a premium on our wares <coughs> i'm sorry and to raise the prices of our manufacturers his argument was sound <coughs> i'm sorry again but he was nonplussed when i informed him that i was to encourage hand spun and hand woven khadi which had been woefully neglected and which needed to be revived if the starving and unemployed millions were to be served but khadi is not the only such struggling industry i therefore suggest to you to direct your attention and effort to all the small scale minor unorganized industries that are today in need of public support Twenty one village transport a plea for the village cart. 
Animal power is not costlier than machine power in fields or short distance work and hence can compete with the latter in most cases. The present day tendency is towards discarding animal power in preference to machine power. If a farmer has his own cart and travels in it, he has not to spend anything in the form of uh, ready money but uses the produce of his own field in producing power by feeding the bullocks. Really, grass and grain should be looked upon by the farmer as his, as his petrol and the cart, the motor lorry and bullock as the engine converting grass into power. The machine will neither consume grass nor will it yield manure, an article of vast importance. Then the villager has to have his bullocks where in any case he has his grass and if he has a cart he is also maintaining the village uh, carpenter and the blacksmith and if he is keeping a cow he is also maintaining a hydrogenation plant converting vegetable oil into <coughs> solid butter or ghee and also at the same time a bullock manufacturing machine thus uh, serving a twofold uh, purpose Point number 22 is uh, he talks about currency exchange and tax. Under my system it is uh, the labor which is the current coin and not the metal. Any person who can use his labor has that coin has wealth. He converts his labor into cloth, he converts his uh, labor into grain. If he wants uh, paraffin oil which he cannot himself produce, he uses his surplus grain for getting the oil. It is this exchange of labor on a free, fair and equal terms, hence it is no robbery. You may object that this is a revision to the primitive system of barter, but then is not all international trade based on the principle of a barter system. 23. Village sanitation. <coughs> uh, village sanitation is a very hot issue these days. Divorce. Uh, between a, a divorce between intelligence and labor has resulted in criminal negligence of the villagers and so instead of having graceful uh, hamlets dotting the land we have dung heaps the approach to many villages is not a refreshing experience often one would like to shut one's eyes and stuff one's uh, nose such as the surrounding dirt and offending smell if uh, <clears throat> the majority of congressmen were derived from the villages or rather from our villages as they should be, they should be able to make our villages model, village models, uh, villages models of uh, cleanliness in every sense of the word. But they have never considered it their duty to identify themselves with the villagers in their daily lives. Now has anything changed on this? Uh, you can judge it for yourself. A sense of national or <coughs> social sanitation is not a virtue among us. While making a bath, while taking a bath, I'm sorry, we do not mind dirtying the well or the tank or the river by whose side or in which we perform our ablutions. I regard this defect as a great vice which is responsible for the disgraceful state of our villages and the sac sacred banks of the sacred rivers and for the diseases that spring from insanitation. <clears throat> 24. Village health and hygiene. In a well-ordered society, the citizens uh, know and observe the laws of uh, health and hygiene. It is established beyond doubt that ignorance and neglect of the laws of uh, health and hygiene are responsible for the majority of uh, diseases to which mankind is the very, high, the very high rate of death among us is no doubt largely due to our gnawing poverty but it could be mitigated if the people were properly educated about health and hygiene. <coughs> mens sana in corpore sano. This is a Latin phrase. I'll repeat. Mens sana in, corpor, in corpore sano. A Latin phrase is perhaps the first law for humanity which means a healthy mind in a healthy body is a self-evident truth. There is an inevitable connection between mind and body. <clears throat> Five. 
Gandhi suggests a diet chart. Can you read it? Those days he has suggested a diet chart which dietitians are doing these days. So Gandhi suggests a diet chart for men and sedentary habits uh, as follows. So this particular chart is for people who have sedentary habits. Sedentary habits. So he suggests uh, cow's milk, two pounds. Cereals, wheat, rice, bajra in all, six ounces. Vegetables, leafy, three ounces. Others, five ounces. Raw, one ounce. Ghee, one and a half ounce. Or butter, two ounces. Gur or white sugar, one and a half ounce. Fresh fruit according to one's own taste and purse. How practical. In any case, it is good to take two uh, sar limes a day. The juice should be squeezed and taken with vegetables or in water, cold or hot. All the, uh, these weights are of, uh, are, uh, of raw stuff. I have not put down the amount of salt. It should be added afterwards according to taste. Now how often should one eat? <coughs> I'm sorry again. Many people take two meals a day. The general rule is to take three meals, breakfast early in the morning and before going out to work, dinner at midday and supper in the evening or later. So try it out, your, try it out friends. Uh, I mean, this is something very amazing. Uh, 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 so many years back, a father of nation had uh, suggested a menu card or a daily diet card for us. 26. Village protection. <clears throat> peace brigade. Some time ago I suggested the formation of a peace brigade whose members would risk their lives in dealing with riots, especially communal. The idea was that this brigade should substitute, substitute the, pol the police and even military. This reads ambitious. The achievement may prove impossible, yet if the Congress is to succeed in its uh, non-violent struggle, it must develop the power to deal peacefully with such situations. But sadly, Congress has not uh, spoken about this uh, Peace Brigade and I think uh, personally it's a wonderful idea which the present day government should implement. 27. The village worker. The center of uh, the village worker's life will be the spinning wheel. The idea at the back of Khadi is that it is an industry supplementary to agriculture and co-extensive with it. The spinning wheel cannot be said to have been established in its own proper place in our life until we can banish idleness from our villages and make every village home a busy hive. The worker will not only be spinning regularly but will be working for his bread with the axe or the spade or the last as the case may be. All his hours minus, all his hours minus the eight hours of sleep and rest will be fully occupied with some work. He will have no time to waste, he will allow himself no laziness and allow others none. His life will be a constant lesson to his neighbors in ceaseless and joy giving industry, a compulsory uh, <clears throat> joy giving industry. Our compulsory or voluntary idleness has to go. So he t talks of this particular point that. Uh, in, people cannot afford to be lazy, they need to do their bit. In chapters 28 and 29, he has uh, covered government and the village and its links uh, with Khadr and India and the world. So friends, overall it's a great book just in case you want to know about uh, Gandhi in a much more comprehensive manner, uh, what he thought and what he wanted to do in life. Even when the book was uh, written uh, way back, one finds the central theme so very relevant for India even today. I am convinced every Indian should read this particular book and uh, he is only going to gain um, out of it and there is nothing to lose in this particular book. So friends, uh, hope you liked uh, the show. Goodbye and see you soon.